Longtime Alaska lobbyist Ashley Reed faces criminal charges that he was allegedly chronically late filing reports about his lobbying activities. The state's Public Offices Commission has fined Reed more than $30,000 for the late reports, but Reed allegedly continued to file late. Charges say Reed made nearly $500,000 last year. The lobbyist faces up to a year of prison time. Mr. Reed said he is surprised and has never seen the state file criminal charges for late lobbying reports. APOC says Reed did appeal but never took the next step to appeal to Superior Court. It was a stunning development yesterday. Governor Palin admits to possible pressure from her administration to fire former Department of Public Safety Director Walt Monaghan. But it's how the governor and her staff are explaining this latest development compared to what they've said just last month. CBS 11's Corey Allen Young joins us live with what appears to be several inconsistencies in the Palin administration's statements. Corey? That's right, Dave. The tape phone call we all heard yesterday reveals possible pressure. So when pressed to explain how these latest developments play into what was said in the past, one could be left scratching their head. Listen for yourself. Who's a good run? From the very beginning of the investigation, former Public Safety Commissioner Walt Monaghan had said that he did feel pressure from Governor Palin to get rid of Trooper Michael Wooten, her ex-brother-in-law. There was pressure for that, yes. Pressure that just weeks ago, Palin, her administration, and her husband denied. To tell you that truth is that no pressure was ever put on anybody to fire anybody. Some may say it's pressure, and I say it's just informing. I just cannot recall a specific conversation where Commissioner Monaghan and I talked about this specific trooper. If Walt Monaghan says that I've ever talked to him or pressured him about even talking to him about Wooden, that is absolutely false. Yesterday, the governor changed course. Admitting now that one of her own made phone calls that could be perceived as pressure and were just plain wrong. There's a gentleman by the name of Mike Wooten, who's a trooper in the uh, in the valley, mm -hmm. and um, there is there's a family tie with the governor there, and so I think because of that, um, my understanding is you know um, Walt has been very reluctant to take any action, but I mean, there are some very clear facts out there. Just so you got some insight on the other stuff too, you know, um, it's, it's, it's gonna be interesting, but the general, the general feeling is, you know, they just can't figure out why um, this guy is still working. It wasn't just Bailey who called. I was one of the calls, um, and that much I can tell you. Monaghan says he was working with the governor's staff over the issue of Trooper Wooten. But I was contacted by um, uh, Com Commissioner Annette Kreitzer and um, Chief of Staff Mike Tibbles um, and, um, and then I heard that Frank Bailey had uh, contacted one of the commanders. But Palin said yesterday the subject of her ex-brother-in-law never came up with Monaghan. We never had a conversation on whether Trooper Wooten should be a trooper or not. Monaghan says, not true. She wanted to talk about it over, over the phone, and, and then in, we talked once in, um, at the Capitol building, and she brought it up, and I, I actually advised her that I, she shouldn't be talking about it. The governor also has shown some contradictions in regards to the reason to Monaghan's dismissal. Yesterday she said that Monaghan was let go due to some concerns in his command. I was concerned also that we were not doing enough on continuing alcohol abuse issues that I wanted to see tackled, including the bootlegging issues out in rural Alaska. Well, weeks ago she praised Monaghan for his ability to solve those same issues when offering him a job as the director of the Alcohol Beverage Control Board. I recognize that Walt's interest and strength certainly could be put to good use as he could concentrate exclusively on a couple of issues that were his interest, that be bootlegging and um, alcohol problems in rural Alaska. As the special investigation on the governor's potential abuse of power continues, the question remains on what the governor and our administration's purpose was in dealing with the Department of Public Safety. The governor continues to say she has nothing to hide and will answer any questions. Walt Monaghan says he's cooperating with the investigation as he's already started talking to the investigator Steve Branchflower. Reporting live from the studio, Corey Allen Young, CBS 11 News. Well, the special investigation into Governor Palin's potential abuse of power has resulted into the investigators asking for your help tonight. Flower, thank you for calling. Please leave your information at the sound of the tone. 
Special Investigator Steve Branchflower has activated a tip line for Alaskans to call with information that could help the investigation into the circumstances surrounding the firing of former Public Safety Commissioner Walt Monaghan. Callers calling the tip line will hear a brief recorded greeting from Mr. Branchflower to leave information. The tip line number is 264 6617. We want to know your thoughts about the governor's actions during the commissioner controversy, so we've got a whole section for your feedback on our website. While there, you can answer our web poll. Do you believe Governor Palin when she says she knows nothing about these phone calls? So far, only 12% of you say you believe our governor, while just over 87% say the governor is lying about her knowledge of the phone calls. The poll is still up, so log on to KTVA.com and let us know your thoughts tonight.